the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be reading from the first book of Chronicles. The first book of Chronicles, chapter 21 and verse 26. Today, we have a day of devotion, fasting and prayer to the Lord, to ask mercy and grace to ask for the later rain of this time of rain, to ask for salvation of our families, return of the people and the children and the people who have departed from the church for a while, and even more so, the healing of our brother Panagiotis Spinaki. May the Lord take care of us all. We are reading from the first book of Chronicles, chapter 21. First Chronicles 21 and verse 26. And David built there an altar to the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called on the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire on the altar of burnt offering. So the Lord commanded an angel and returned his sword to its sheath. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite, he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of the Lord and the altar of the burnt offering which Moses had made in the wilderness were at that time at the high place in Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid of the sword of the angel of the Lord. Then David said, This is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of burnt offering for Israel. So David commanded to gather the aliens who were in the land of Israel, and he appointed maisons to cut hewn stones to build the house of God. And David prepared iron in abundance for the nails of the door of the gates, and for the joints and bronze in abundance beyond measure, and set a trees in abundance for the Sidonians, and those from Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. Now David said, Solomon my son is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent, famous and glorious throughout all countries. I will now make preparations for it. So David made abundant preparations before his death. Amen. God, my beloved brethren, through and in His blessed and eternal plan, has programmed completely and in great detail, at least about His work, the work of God and the plan of God. That's why, when he created Adam and Eve, he knew very, very well how things would evolve. And from the beginning, since, in other words, Eve transgressed the Lord's command, she was deceived by the devil. From the beginning, he knew the end of all things. God knew everything, and he prophesied, saying to the woman that, and to the serpent, that, from your seed, I will crush the head of the serpent, the devil, and he shall bruise his heel. God continued his work through Abraham. He created a new people, the people of Israel, through which God would bring, because the end of the plan of God is the salvation of man, is through Jesus Christ as we said, the salvation of man. So in the plan of God, it was for him to create a kingdom of God upon the earth, a heavenly kingdom on earth, in which was created with the starting point of, with David, a man after God's own heart, who God, when trying to find he said, he cried out and said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who would do all my will. And today, 
This is my beloved brethren. Our message and our subject today for us to do always the will of God through any kind of situation. Let's see now what the will of God was for David. The will of God for David was the creation of the kingdom of God on earth in which there will be no end to because in this kingdom Christ will reign and upon earth for a thousand years and through this reign we will reign also the priests and the kings of Most High throughout eternity. But through the special plan of God there was to be built a temple in which God dwelling, the magnificent temple of Solomon. And even more so, through the word of God, it is evident, and I'd like us to see this together, it's in, it's in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, chapter 12, verse 5. Deuteronomy, sorry, chapter 12 and verse 11. Deuteronomy 12, 11. Then there will be the place where the Lord your God chooses to make His name abide. There you shall bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the heap offerings of your hand, and all your choice offerings which you vow to the Lord. So God does not give freedom to people to worship God where they want to. But also in the Old Testament and the New Testament, He has pre-appointed a temple of God, a house of God, where God dwells in. And there you will be able to draw close to God and find God. And there you shall build, and there you shall increase, and there you shall be edified, and God will be glorified in your life. In the Old Testament it was the Temple of Solomon. In the New Testament it's the Church of God, the House of God, the Pillar of Truth. So the Temple of God had to be built, in which would dwell the glory of God. And each person from all the world who would want to seek God would find God there. And this temple would be magnificent, famous and glorious throughout all the world. This was therefore the plan of God. And now he must prepare it. David must prepare it. In the beginning God put in David's heart when he blessed him and made him prosper, increased him, not only did he establish him as king, but also a glorious king at that. He put and placed in his heart, and he decided to build a house for the Lord. It was a very nice decision, but it was in accordance to the will of God. And it doesn't matter, and here we want us to be careful of, if our decisions are right and beautiful, and pleasing according to our opinion for God. That's not what the crucial point is for us to decide. We, according to our opinion, the will of God. Even if it is the best. Because it is the best what now David decides to do. To build a house, a magnificent house, a glorious house for the glory of God, for God to dwell in. And it is according to the plan of God also, but it's not in detail according to the will of God. That's why when he speaks with Nathan the prophet, Nathan is happy and says, do what it's in your heart because God is with you. But when Nathan leaves, God visits Nathan and said, no, go and tell him my will is something else. His thoughts are good. They're pleasing before my eyes, but it's not what I have programmed to happen. I repeat, this isn't what I have programmed. It is necessary, and David, and every person of God, to try the will of God, which is good, acceptable, and perfect, to know 
and to be assured if this is what God truly has programmed and afterwards to go on. Why? Because if he doesn't walk exactly on the footprint of Christ, then the danger is great and for himself, but also for the work of God. Of course, God loves David because David's sincere and he's got a heart that's upright and perfect before the Lord. That's why he sends a message to David with Nathan the prophet. Specific and completely clear. So, he says, go and tell David that you have placed in your heart to build a temple for me. But I tell you, and I proclaim to you, that I, God, will build a house for you. You have placed in your heart a good thought to build a temple, a house. But I have a better plan. You have a plan which is temporary, but I've got a plan which is eternal. You have a plan which is human, but I have a plan which is heavenly. And for every person that belongs to God, God has a plan. Not a plan that's temporary. Not a plan that's earthly. Not a plan that's human. But a glorious heavenly plan which has one goal for Christ to be glorified. For Christ to save. For the name of Christ to be exalted. For the word. His word to be fulfilled and the will of God to be completed. That's why tell my servant David that he was a shepherd who kept a few sheep in which I gave them to him in the first place. But I discerned how he kept these sheep. He kept them with love. They were his. And when danger came for his sheep and for himself, he did not take under account his own life. But even before the lion and the bear, he placed himself in the front line so he can protect these few sheep in which God had entrusted him with. And he found grace by God. And God gave him power, supernatural power, above human power, and he overcame and he killed this 17 year old child, the lion and the bear, and he saved his sheep. And because he remained faithful in what was a few, I will establish him over a lot, the word of God says. And I established you from a shepherd boy to a governor of my people, in which I created then, a thousand years ago with my servant Abraham, in which I tried and tested and established him, father of faith and a father of the people of God. That's why I am happy for the decision that you have made. That's why I am responding to your decision. You will not build a house for me, but I will build a house for you throughout eternity an eternal house, an eternal kingdom. About my house on earth, know that I have not programmed you to build this house, but I have planned for your son, who will be called Solomon. He will be peaceful man, a peaceful man. He will not be a man of blood and war, because I will give rest to him, Peace, glory, wisdom and understanding so he can build. Not with his own logic, but with the plans in which you will give him, in which I give you. With the materials that you will prepare him for, in which I am providing you with. And with the counsel, the advice and exhortation that you will give him because I give them to you first. And David, when he heard these things, was very happy. He glorified God. He wasn't saddened because his son 
would do what he had decided to do in his heart. He was happy because God honored him, spoke to him, revealed himself to him, and he uses him for the work. Not that David wants for himself, but for the work that God has decided for David. And so he placed in his heart to build the temple. Solomon, his son, he put in David's heart. But now, there is a crucial point, a basic detail, which is a place in which the temple will be built on. David doesn't know that there must be a place. He doesn't know anything why? Because he's a man. Doesn't know a thing. Nothing at all. We don't know anything, my brethren, because we are people. But God is laboring to find a way to reveal to you all the truth through the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will lead us to all the truth. And every truth is the Word of God. Through the Word of God, God revealed to you all the truth. The Holy Spirit, the Helper, the Spirit of Truth will reveal it to you for your salvation, for the salvation of your family, for the, your happiness on earth, but also for the salvation of your soul and eternal life in which He will give you as an inheritance. There is a place, prayer appointed by God. David doesn't know it. It's a place where a thousand years ago, since David, two thousand years ago from us, God, the first man that he used to create the people of Israel, Abraham, he tested him on with a trial of faith which was horrific when he said to him, Your son in which you love and which is all the promises upon, my promises upon, I say to you, go and sacrifice him on the, on the mountain in which I will reveal to you. And Abraham, because truly he was a man of faith, he did not talk about the word of God, but he started off a journey of three days, and he climbed the Mount Moriah. And there on Mount Moriah, he bound his son Isaac. He even lifted up the knife to kill him, according to the word of God. But the Lord did not allow it. And he promised him great things. He said to him, I who bless will bless you, and I will multiply your seed as the stars in heaven and the sands on the beach. Your seed will reign over all your enemies and through your seed all the nations will be blessed because you obeyed my voice. And there on Mount Moriah in which he was found and he, Abraham, called the Lord will provide. There the Lord had foreseen the building of the Temple of Solomon. A thousand years went by. The land of Israel was divided, and this region was inherited by Ornan, who was a man truly according to God's own heart, also. But for us to see this, let's firstly go to chapter 3 of 2 Chronicles. Chapter 3, sec 2 Chronicles, sorry, chapter 3. Verse 1. Second Chronicles, chapter 3, verse 1. The Bible says, Now Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David at the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor for Ornan the Jebusite. Here it is, my beloved brethren, the place in which God had pre-appointed. 
the Mount Moriah where Abraham went to sacrifice his son and he was called the Lord will provide. But also the threshing floor of Ornan who he inherited when God divided the land of Israel. But how would David get there? It's amazing the plan of God. The Bible says at some point in time when David reached his glory and he crushed all his enemies the wrath of the Lord was against Israel and he stirred up the devil stirred up David against them and he said go and count the people of Israel the devil therefore expressed his wrath against the people of Israel and God permitted it and this is the amazing part that God uses all the means as once he used the devil for Job because he had intentions God had intentions to upgrade his relation with Job the Job was always blameless upright shunning evil he was pure before the Lord but he had not reached where God wanted him to be so close to him and he allowed the devil to tempt him so through this temptation for the blessings of God to come the greater blessings so Job can say until now I heard with my ears about you but now I see you with my eyes and he blessed his past double in his future and now again God will give grace he will permit the devil to deceive David so David can be puffed up to do something for David to do something that God doesn't like to boast about the multitude of his soldiers and to hope in the multitude of his soldiers instead of boasting in the Lord and hoping only in God and here again this is a very serious thing we must take under account let's not boast in the blessings that God gives us in our lives by grace my brethren we have and we enjoy and obtain what we have by grace of God let's be very careful when we talk about how much God has blessed us let's be very very careful let's be careful so the glory we always give to Jesus he who boasts must always must always boast in the Lord and so the Lord was angry Joab the man of iniquity advised David not to count the people but the Bible says the king's um, opinion overrided his and as a result he counted the people and 1,100,000 people of Israel were counted and 470,000 of the people of Judah were counted but then on the wrath of God came and God sends his prophet Gad and says choose in which way you want the wrath of God to come to your life because that's how God worked them because there was no blood of Christ which cleanses us from every sin you want three years of hunger do you want three months to be defeated by your foes with the sword of your enemies of attacking you or else three days of the sword of the Lord and the sincere David said I'm in great distress please let me fall into the hand of the Lord for his mercies are very great but do not let me fall into the hand of man so the Lord sent a plague upon Israel and 70,000 men of Israel fell and then the plague reached Jerusalem there in Jerusalem it reached the threshing floor of Onan and there on that threshing floor the Lord showed compassion to Jerusalem and said to the angel it's enough and David seeing all the sheep of God being slaughtered he repented he cried he prayed he said Lord 
to me and my family, may your wrath be on what's the fault of these people. But God, my brethren, wanted to lead him, guide him to the threshing floor of Onan. And the angel went and said to him, Go and sacrifice to the threshing floor of Onan. And David did go. And when he sacrificed and he prayed, the Lord co-witnessed with fire falling from heaven, as he usually did in special circumstances, especially circumstances that had to do in the place of his dwelling, whether it's in a tabernacle or the temple of Solomon or now in the threshing floor of Onan. And David understood. He understood because he heard the prayer. God heard David's prayer in that place. And God commanded the angel to take the sword back in the sheath. And the people of Israel were freed. And the people of Jerusalem were freed. And David understood and said, Then, this is the temple of God. And this is the altar for the people of Israel. This is where the temple will be built, hallelujah. And the plan of God was completed. Became a reality with the wisdom of God, but also with the faith of David, who remained faithful always in every situation. And in his sin and in his pride, he remained faithful, confessing and repenting his sin to God. God finds, my beloved brethren, ways to lead his people who have hearts that are according to God's heart. He finds ways. He will take you where he wants you to be. But when you want to go where God wants you to go, he will take you to the end. When you want to reach the end where God has pre-appointed for you, not the end in which your heart pre-appoints. You will do the work of God. The work of God will be fulfilled. The work of God which was programmed before the world was made for you personally. It will come to pass. But only when you want for the will of God to be fulfilled in your life. Not your will but His will. And you wait with patience to have a pure guidance from God, because it is written, only those who are led by the Holy Spirit are truly children of God. My beloved brethren, good news from heaven today. The will of God will be done. Only, son, guard your heart with all diligence, because from it spring all the issues of life. Amen.